the redwood forest as a Californian is an extraordinarily special space. I grew up hiking in those forests. I grew up um, teaching my children how to camp in those forests. And the thought that that forest is, is gone and gone forever places me in the same existential position that I'm gonna argue we're all in, but makes it, makes it clear that we are in exile from the kind of world that was a, a, a rather stable climactic world for generation on generation for the 2000 years that it took to grow those forests in California and gone in an instant because of our complete inability um, to, to control essentially our hungers and our desires. And I wanna think about that because my view of the future is a future in which we become capable of radical sacrifice. And if the texts of Torah teach us anything, it teaches us that sacrifice and limits on desires is an essential part of being human. Um, that the, in, you can't give the um, corners of your field to the poor unless your fields have limits and corners, unless your fields don't overtake everything. Um, the, the essential nature of our relationship between self and other is that we have to, um, we have to take care to withdraw our own desires so that we don't overcome the needs and the cries of the others who confront us in a face-to-face -face relationship as all relationships ought, ought to be. Climate change presents a very particular problem because it, it presents a problem that is at once ontological, um, a, a large metaphysical problem about how we live in the world and at once very practical. What do we do about people who, we live in advanced capitalism. We live in a time when modernity seems not quite in our control. Um, we live in a time of extraordinary political anger and a rejection of what we used to be able to think of as a scientific consensus. Our country rejects not only the, um, the climate change, disturbingly enough, the denial is not only for climate change, but with the denial is really for science itself. And somehow that's a surrogate for denial of a way of living in the world around in, in, in the modern era. And we see this across the board. Um, we see this in the faintly pagan embrace of naturalness, of purity and naturalness, which is, has long troubled Jew, um, scholars of Jewish thought and, 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 the, and the rabbis of the Talmud. This embrace of the natural as sacred in a way that's um, that's uncritical or sometimes hostile even to, to agricultural or, or organizational forms. We see this in the yearning to go backward into an earlier period in American history, a time when um, we, were, we were able not to think about the, the, the challenges of race and gender that we, we have to confront now. We think we see this denial of all sorts of elites, not just scientific elites, but a, a, a distancing oneself from from universities, from, um, from fine arts, from museums, this notion of that pulling away leads to a more authentic place is a troubling feature of climate change denial. But the climate change denial that I wanna focus on today isn't the denial of other people, isn't this um, a denial of people who are out there in the world having an illiberal view of, of things. It's the denial of, of our, our very own friends and our very own, um, our very own supporters and our very own movements. And in this, I wanna talk about the way that we have not taken climate change really seriously. And I, I know we talk about it and I know we think about it. And I know we, um, we used to bring um, cloth bags to the supermarket, but in some fundamental way, we haven't really faced the existential terror of climate change because if we had, really had, we would live really differently. Um, no one would have a car. We would figure out how to live without cars. No one would be jetting off to academic conferences or conferences, climate change conferences, for goodness sakes. Nobody, <laughs> no one would be ever eating meat. It would just be a thing that no one would do. I mean, in the same way that, that, um, that most people don't smoke anymore because it became sort of a disgusting thing to do, the eating of meat the em embrace of the radical sacrifice that climate change is really gonna re require of us would simply be easily done. 